So my third Giants Live show of the year was the World Tour Finals. We headed out to Scotland and we were in an amazing venue. I completely forget what this venue was called, but it was unreal. Uh, it was in Glasgow and it was full capacity. It, it was 50,000 people, um, which is similar to the professional size hockey stadiums that were in here. Um, obviously we, we didn't pack it out. They, they brought a curtain forward, but you step into that venue and you're like, this is, this is special. This is really cool. Now, in terms of the lineup, we didn't have Tom and Luke Stolman, which I was a bit concerned about because obviously we're in front of a Scottish crowd and wasn't sure how much they were going to uh, still be excited, even though those two weren't competing. They still did turn up, but the guys who were competing, we had myself, we had Wad Pablo, we had Pablo Coriaca, Nero Pablo. Um, we still had a couple of Scottish boys. We had Lewis Jack and Andy Black, uh, so it was good to have them there. Uh, but some really strong competitors, Ivor Sparkstellis, who won more international shows than anyone else this year, uh, Kevin Ferris, and uh, Rano Heinle. We had Paul Smith, uh, Paul Dwyer, Eddie Williams was back, which was awesome to see him. Uh, but pretty strong field, uh, really. Uh, and for me, this was two weeks before the Rome, which was a massive focus of mine. So World Tour Finals, the goal here was to win. Uh, I had come second only losing to Ukrainians, Alexei and Pavlo at the previous two Giants lives. And this is my last chance to take home a win in my rookie season. So the events, we started with nickel stones and carrying these stones is so hard. It's so hard on the thumbs. I had set a world record on the Arnold stones a couple of weeks before this in uh, Birmingham uh, at the Arnold UK. And these stones were lighter. So I was pretty confident coming in that I would be able to put up a good result. And at the time I went, I went second last and I set a new world record at 24 meters, which is awesome because this is a, it's a well-established event. So that's a, to me, a more substantial world record than something like the Arnold Stones that are pretty new. Uh, then Kevin Ferris came after me and he beat my uh, record by half a meter. Uh, hats off to him. He's unbelievable at the, uh, at the Stones. Second place going into event number two. The one thing that happens that I thought would happen is Wide Pablo, who's probably the strongest person in Strongman right now, but just too erratic. Uh, he lost a lot of points on this. So he only got four points on the nickel stones. Uh, Pablo Cordiaca, who is another big contender for this show, he only got two points. So there's a, a bit of struggle between those guys. Uh, and that sort of, it really opened the doors, in my opinion, for me to then take home the win. Uh, the next event was the carry and drag. This is right up my alley uh, in terms of being fast and, and being precise. So we carry a big anchor, we carry that down 20 meters, we hook it onto a chain, then we drag the chain. I spent a lot of time in the morning before the show getting that hook portion right because you could waste a lot of time making sure or if you mess that up. And there's a couple of things that you have to do with that that I'm not sure everyone knew uh, that allowed you to just sort of drop the, the anchor onto it properly. And then obviously you're dragging the chain. After I got the hook on well, I knew I was moving fast. I was beside Kevin Ferris, who's also one of the fastest strongmen in the world. I had a, a reasonable lead on him and I knew that I just had to get a pretty solid drag in, did that and ended up winning the event, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, after that, we went to deadlift. I was in the last group on deadlift, thanks to winning the carry and drag. This meant that I could see what everyone else did and I could then determine how many reps I wanted to do uh, or would be most beneficial for me to do. So I watched Pablo absolutely mog the event and get 11 reps. This was on a 360 kilo axle, I believe. He got 11 reps uh, and that put him in the lead and set a new world record. Rauno got nine reps, which gave him 11 points. And everyone below that was somewhere in the six rep range. So we had three guys there. We had Mark Felix, uh, Ivor Smarkstellis and Kevin Ferris, all with six reps. Then we had Pablo Cordiaca and Paul Dwyer with five. So I knew that if I got seven reps, that would be a great result. That would put me third in the event. And the two guys who beat me at this stage weren't close enough for me to be too concerned. And so I got a pretty smooth seven reps. I didn't tax myself too much. I left it there and took my third place finish on that event, 10 points and I was in the lead going into the dumbbell press. Now at this stage, Kevin Fares wasn't far behind me uh, and him and I were going head to head on the dumbbell press. 
I knew that I needed to have a good result on this to be able to um, position myself well for the final event. Um, I remembered what had happened in uh, the world's uh, World Deadlift Champs, the World Open uh, in uh, Cardiff. I remember what happened there and I lost my lead even though I had a three point lead. So I thought, let's get like a seven point lead, eight point lead, let's just make it a little bit simpler, make it a little bit easier. And so the dumbbell press, I spoke with Lars and the strategy was basically get as many reps as possible. Uh, I got six and I narrowly missed the seventh. Um, dumbbell is something that I've been working really, really hard on and I think I'm gonna bring uh, a whole new package next year. Uh, and I'm, I'm quite confident that I'll be, yeah, I'll be much, much better. Anyway, that still put me in third place. So Pablo Koryaka and Ivor Schmokstelis both hit seven reps on that. I took my 10 points and headed into the final event, the power stairs with that fairly sizable lead that I wanted. I, I believe I was seven points ahead of Kevin Ferris, who was in second, and I was six and a half points ahead of Ivers Marcellus. Maybe Ivers was in second at this stage. Uh, but those power stairs, I'd never done before since Worlds, uh, and I'll let Worlds be its own thing, uh, but I knew that I was capable of doing well on this, and there was five implements and five stairs, uh, starting at, I think we started at 200 and ended at 250, something like that. Uh, anyway, I knew that if I had a fairly smooth run, fairly clean run, I would be fine. I got through the first four pretty easily. And on the fifth, I started to take my time, be a little bit more deliberate, soak in the moment. I ended up getting all the stairs. I came fourth in that event, took nine points and won the overall show by four and a half points, winning the World Tour Finals and setting myself up for a first seed at World's Strongest Man next year which was a phenomenal way to finish off my Giants Live year. That means a second place in Royal Albert Hall, a second place in Cardiff, a first place in the World Tour Finals. I couldn't have imagined this happening myself, uh, but super blessed, super, super lucky, and very excited to see what next year holds. All right, so that was the uh, World Tour Finals. If you enjoyed the video, please click the subscribe, leave a moose dropping down below, and if you can, joining the membership would help me a lot. Um, and you can read into the, the couple of benefits that we have for the members as well when you click on there. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you guys soon and enjoy.